Welcome back to KMM Tech. Today we're going to talk about dashboards inside of Hubitat. Now admittedly dashboards is not something that I use quite often, um, maybe once or twice a month actually. Most of my automations are automatic and I don't really need the dashboards all that often. And the few times that I do need them, I'll actually use my voice assistants for them, whether they be my Amazon or my um, Google Home to complete things, turn things on and off, whatever. But we're gonna go through and create a new dashboard today. So we're gonna to go to add new dashboard right here. And it's gonna ask you for a dashboard name. So in this case, we're gonna call this test a dash, the test dashboard. So just test for now and add a new dashboard. This gives you a um, quick, you know, I guess instruction guide on how to um, do your dashboards. So what you'll notice that it says that the current dashboard currently has 68 devices authorized. Those are lights, switches, dimmers, um, home security monitor, monitor options, modes, all that sort of things are all included. Um, and then you can go down here to where it says auto fill the grid, which will, what that will do is it will take all 68 devices and dump them into a dashboard, which we're not going to do. We're going to manually add all of these in by hand. So when you hit manually add, you'll see that it asks, it brings up the add tile um, page here. So you can go through and you can place the, the tile based on column by using plus or minus or row, and that will move it on the grid. Um, I like to just click on the grid and just tell it where to go. So for this example, we're gonna add the MBTV light. And for this example, this is actually a color bulb. So we'll hit that and we can add it. And you'll notice that it adds to the top left corner because that's where I clicked. And this grid now has a little gray bar, um, box here instead of green. So that shows that that is now taken. I can move this to anywhere I want um, in the, um, on, the, on the page here. So if I go back to here, and I can move it over to there, I can move it over here, wherever I want to move it is where it will go. Um, I can also move it by increasing the row or the column up to you however you, you, you want to do it there's also tile width and tile height so you can increase that make them bigger or smaller depending on the need and to delete it you can of course go to delete tile to add a new tile you just go to the top right corner hit the plus sign and you'll see that by default it is set to go to column two and row because it can't go to column one row one because there's something there already so I can move it to say column five. Let's go to column eight for right now. And I'm in the basement, so we'll add the basement. And the basement is just a switch. Actually, it's a dimmer switch, but let's do switch for right now. And that added that. So you'll notice that this is now here and that is now here. So from here, let's go to the colored bulb, for example. When I click on that, I can now change my bulb to whatever color I want, set the level brightness, to whatever I want it to be, and then hit it, switch it on, and now that light is on, and it's blue. Um, so for the basement, it's just a switch, so when I click here, it turns it off, and if I click it again, it turns it on. Very simple, pretty easy to do. Now, as I showed you before, um, the, the top three little buttons here in the top corner gives you the options to change this particular tile. So let's go to this tile here. So from here again, I can move it, move it over here for right now. Now I told you this is actually a dimmer switch, not just a regular switch. So I can go through and change this to a dimmer and then close. You'll notice that now it's a dimmer and I can now change this brightness to whatever brightness I want. And that's how you can change the different um, templates. So that's basically dashboards, how to add things. Um, there are a couple more options which we'll go into. There's a little gear icon over here in the top right corner, and that gives you the options for um, the actual dashboard itself. So you'll notice that here, the, the, um, the background color, you can actually upload a background image, not upload, but um, point, the, uh, point this to an actual image, and I'll show you what mine looks like in a second. Um, so there's an image there that you can use. You can change the color to green or blue, whatever color you'd like. For right now, we'll leave it as black. You can do custom colors, um, all sorts of good stuff. 
over here there's options there's lots of options here that you can choose from um your the tw the clock mode if, if you put the clock in there it'll you know whether it's 12 hour 24 hour the uh, month date time um, configuration um, the cloud interval how often that refreshes itself um, this is kind of a cool feature um, if you have different um, size monitors um, if you get rid of the the um, numbers here it will auto fit to stretch to the screen um, I like it set this way for right now um, but lots of different options you can explore on your own um, next is options I'm sorry next is templates sorry um, so templates is something I use quite a bit on my personal dashboard uh, what you can do is you can change the color of your templates so for example we have the dimmer switch here um, we'll go to dimmer you notice that there are two states for the dimmer. There's an on state and an off state. So what I what I usually do for mine is I change the background color. So if a switch is on, it's green. And if a switch is off, it's red. So now when I close this, if I turn this switch off, you notice that it changes red. And then when I turn it on, it goes back to green. Just a nice way to visually see um, the state without having to really guess. Um, the next thing I want to show you how to do is you can actually add, uh, well, let's jump over to my, my dashboard first. Actually, no, let's, let's do it this way. So one of the, the cool things you can do is you can actually have links to other dashboards inside here. So let's go to the Add button. And under Template, we're going to go to Dashboard Link. And you'll notice that there are two different dashboards. There's this test one that we just created. And then there's the main dashboard, which is my main dashboard. So I'm going to hit main. And let's do this. And let's make it a big button like that. And add tile. So what this is, is this is a link that will take you to my main dashboard. So if I click on that, you'll see that it loads my main dashboard. So here's my main dashboard. Um, it is just you know the basically the the um, the different um, switches and buttons and stuff that I use um, frequently. My living room TV, the kitchen, um, Logitech Harmony activities, that sort of thing, are all here. I have the current mode that the Habitat is in, um, the status of the security monitor, whether I'm present or not, the state of my garage door, and a little weather app over here. Um, so yeah, so then here, I, I'm gonna put a link back to here. Um, so here's a dashboard link, and we can link this back to test and close. And now when I click on this, this should take us back to the test dashboard that we created. So the reason for this, this is actually kind of a cool thing, what a lot of people do, is they'll create kind of a main catch-all um, dashboard that has all of the most frequently used um, buttons. And then they'll have a link to each um, each room in their in their house. That way, they can go in and get more granular control over all the devices that are in that um, dashboard. I don't go too crazy with that because I generally don't use the dashboard all that often because so much of my house is automated. Um, so um, that is that. So let's hop on over. I'm going to show you what this is all about in a second. So let's hop on over to the apps screen over here. Um, and we'll hop into the dashboard uh, option here. So you'll see here, um, these are the two dashboards that I have created. You can um, go ahead and send a link to your dashboards um, to your cell phone number. Um, you can access your local dashboard or your cloud dashboard. The difference between the two of them, the local dashboard is if you are on your current network. So if I'm at home, this local dashboard will work. If I am out and about at a store or something, I can actually use the cloud dashboard and that will allow me to access all of the dashboards and all the devices that way. Um, personally, I use everything with local dashboards and I have a VPN set up um, on my network. I have VPN into my house and I always use the local dashboard. That's just how I do it. <clears throat> um, but again, up to you how you wanna do it. So, um, then if you go into each of the dashboards, so we're, let's go into the test dashboard for right now so I don't mess up my own. 
you'll see here the links again to the dashboard um, and then you can select whether you want to use use all the devices you can actually set it so you, you don't use all the devices on the dashboard if you want um, and then there are a bunch of options under the advanced tab so how fast should the cloud dashboard refresh so what it will do is it will pull the, the devices so if you have like dimmers and switches it'll pull to see if those are on or not and check the states um, so that's how fast that does so you can actually set up that there there's a pin on your dashboards if you want to um, I don't happen to have that set up on any of my dashboards not really sure why I sent that error about the pin uh, it might be a little bug um, I just ran the new update so it might be a, a bug in the new update I'm not sure yet but you can have um, you can have a pin to um, lock the dashboard. You can um, have require a pin before changing the security monitor um, or changing your mode. And you can allow or, or block access to um, the cloud links or the dashboard links and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can also, once you've configured the, the your dashboard the way you like it, you can lock it down so people who are actually looking at your dashboard can't actually go in and change it. And you have to go through the actual app to do that. So that is dashboards. Um, I know that was kind of a quick video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a, a comment down below and I'll, I'll answer them best I can. If you do like what we're doing here, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to, please make sure you subscribe to the videos here and hit that bell notification so you're notified when our new videos come out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.